Hello, welcome. My name is Marco from Water Dragon Arts. Welcome to my new video. Today I want to show you a simple exercise that's called the Lotus Flower Sways in the Wind. I'm going to teach this a little bit differently. I'm going to, let's say, skip the Qigong jargon. Okay, I'm going to explain what this means. If you go to a Qigong class, quite often you hear cues that are related to Qi and the Dantian. And naturally, that's correct, there's nothing wrong with that. But for some people, it's difficult to understand this Qigong jargon if they don't have any prior background knowledge of Qigong, Neigong, or sometimes even traditional Chinese medicine. So I know that some people are looking for some more tangible cues so that they actually know what to focus on. Where is the focus of attention in the body? What am I actually doing? What happens in the body when I execute this Qigong movement? Exactly these kind of things, that's what I made this video for. So it's particularly good for a beginner of Qigong who wants to learn how to practice a simple Qigong uh, exercise with tangible cues that you can actually apply at home. If you're interested in learning more Qigong or also Tai Chi Chuan, at this point I would like to invite you to visit my website waterdragonarts.com. There is an online academy as well as many different online courses. I hope to see you there. Enjoy the video. So before we will start with the video, I want to let you know that I'm going to tell you lots of different little cues and adjustments that we will do inside the body. Naturally, this will be a little bit confusing in the beginning because there is simply so much, there are so many instructions. When we practice Qigong in a class setting, it will be different. You wouldn't immediately pour out all the instructions at once because it will just confuse the student, but instead you would give always little chunks of knowledge so the student can develop step by step. Now in this video I want to just present to you or show you those physiological cues. Basically I want to explain this Qigong exercise from a different perspective, not using the Qigong jargon. And to keep this a little bit shorter, I'm going to tell you many of those little instructions um, at once. For you at home, this means that it makes sense if you practice this exercise at home to just take one or two of those cues and just focus on them. Just do a few turns of that movement, simply focusing on the one or two instructions until this becomes more natural and you actually feel it inside the body. It will maybe even become a habit so that you don't have to think about it anymore. Once you stop thinking about it, you will be able to relax more and focus on some of the other cues that involving more you know, the relaxation of the muscles, for example. Okay, so take the cue step by step and then make sure you will build a habit and allow it for some time. Don't try to rush through it. Don't just watch this video once. Watch it a couple of times and always pick the cues that you want to work on. Now I'm going to tell you how we stand first, our basic Qigong stance, because it already involves lots of the principles that we will apply throughout the Qigong exercise. I'm only going to tell you the most important cues because there is a, another video that I've already made for you. I'm going to link it up there in the upper right corner for you. So you can watch that if you want to learn the basic Qigong stance more in detail. After that Qigong stance, I'm going to show you the exercise that we will practice. We will do a few turns together and then step by step I will include more cues. Okay, so let's start. We're going to begin with the feet shoulder wide apart, okay? Parallel to each other. I don't want you to stand like this or with the feet, with the toes a little bit facing inward even though this means that it might be a little bit less comfortable than you would normally stand, okay? So keep the feet parallel. The next thing we will do is we will raise the crown of the head, which is this point here, basically the natural extension of the cervical spine. So we lift it up gently as if a string was attached to this point here and someone is pulling that string up 
just a little bit. Okay, so you will notice that your chin is coming in a little bit towards the throat, basically. And at the same time, the back of the neck is going to stretch a little bit. So you will feel a slight opening there. The next thing we want to focus on is the pelvis, okay? We want to relax the pelvis down and to do so we are going to bend the knees slightly, just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to bring the knees further forward than your toes, okay? And then try to relax the pelvis as good as possible. You can even turn it from one side to another side a little bit, just getting rid of the gross tension that you feel, maybe even in the lower back. And then pull the body a little bit back up again, pulling from the crown of the head. The shoulders relax down as good as you can. Just focus on the shoulder blades. Imagine your shoulder blades are becoming heavy, simply dragging or melting down the back. If you feel your shoulders coming inward a tiny little bit because you're relaxing, don't worry, that's okay. Simply relax. Okay, now I want you to take a look at your weight distribution. So focus on the bottom of your feet and just notice if you're maybe too far on the heels. So maybe more of your weight is towards the heels. And then that's the case. You want to bend forward a little bit, kind of slightly hinge the upper body forward so that the weight is distributed more evenly on the feet. Okay, so you want to bring the weight to the Yong Chuan point, which is this point here. Okay. How can you determine if you're distributing the, your weight correctly? Well, first of all, from left to right, you want to make sure that the weight is not too far on one side compared to the other, okay? So you want to even it out there. So your mind has to be in your feet and just feel the pressure on your feet, basically. And this will tell you how your weight is distributed. In order to find the right position from the front to the back of the foot, I always suggest to go a little bit on the heels first and then bend a little bit forward and with the mind in the feet, feel how you spread the tissues in your feet. Okay, and there is a point towards the Yong Chuan point, the point that I just showed you, where this feels like pancake batter that's poured in a pan and it's literally just spreading thinner and thinner. Okay, so you want to have the weight evenly distributed. Now bring the crown of the head up a little bit. And now I want you to focus on the crown and then on the pelvis, alternating. First crown, bring it up, and then the pelvis, relax it down. In order to do this, it might help to tuck the pelvis under a little bit. So not like this, like a duck butt, but tilt it, tuck it under a little bit, but not too much, okay? You don't want to forcefully hold it in this position because then you will create more tension. The goal is to drop the tailbone down and allow the pelvis to be received down into the ground, okay? So you want to create a pelvis that's relaxing down, therefore moving downward, pulling downward, whereas the crown of the head is going upward. So you're having two opposing forces here, which will result in a stretched spine. Okay, so you're opening the whole spine when you're doing that. Take a few deep breaths. On every exhale, you try to drop the tailbone a little bit more, release the pelvis a little bit more, while the crown of the head stays gently elevated, suspended from above, okay? Picture those two opposing forces. The head stays where it is, gently suspended from above, and the pelvis relaxes down. 
Empty the chest cavity, relax the whole chest area. Relax the lower abdomen. Make sure you're not pinching your butt cheeks together. Okay, that's also very important. Sounds funny, but you will realize that if you relax your butt cheeks, your pelvis is able to relax down even a little bit better. It's like you're getting rid of that blockage and your pelvis just sinks down a bit more. Okay, that's the basic Qigong stance and we want to apply those principles throughout the Qigong exercise. Now, you will see when I'm going to do the Qigong movement, I'm always rising up a little bit and I'm going to sink down a little bit. The way we do this is by focusing on the crown of the head and pulling it up. We're basically gently pulling it up. Someone's pulling on that string and the whole of the body stays relaxed down. Okay, so we maintain the slight stretch in the spine the whole time. And when we're going to sink down, we're going to focus on the pelvis and the crown stays up there. So we're guiding, we're leading that movement, that sinking from the pelvis, from the tailbone. And when we come up, we're guiding, we're leading this movement from the crown of the head. So we are sinking, we are sitting into the quad, we are rising, coming back up, focusing on the pelvis and sink. Focus on the crown and rise. Whole body stays relaxed. Shoulders stay hanging down, sinking and rising. Now I'm going to show you what the exercise looks like, okay? I'm just not gonna explain a lot right now. I'm just going to show you a few turns so you can take a look at it. Okay, that's the exercise. It looks very simple in the very beginning, but just wait until, you, until I tell you all the cues for it. You can already try this at home. Just try to copy that movement. To give you the first cue, we're going to sink, pelvis sinks down. And at the lower position, the arms come slightly forward in front of our body. And here we're going to turn the elbows just a little bit up. So we're basically from here turning the elbows to the front. Okay, and you will see that the shoulders are coming a little bit forward as well. You don't want to turn just from the lower arm. You want to turn the elbows forward from the whole shoulder joint, in fact. Okay, so the movement comes from here and not just from here, All right? Your chest, cavity in this case will be a little bit hollowed. We will arch the chest, it goes inward, and empty the chest. And you can relax and release all that tension that you're holding in your chest cavity here. Okay? At the same time, the upper back is going to be arched outward. Okay? So the upper back is going to open up. There is a slight stretch in the upper back. Okay? Step one. We're standing, shoulder wide, with the feet parallel to each other. Apply the principles, we sink. We turn the elbows forward. Step two will be bring the palms of the hands facing outward. And then we're opening up a curtain, basically. Okay, so you can imagine you're just opening up a curtain like this by pressing the arms outward. Or you can imagine you're swimming, because actually it looks a little bit like you're swimming. I'm going to tell you why there is this such a specific cue, such a specific instruction for this one in just a second. Okay, 
So step one, sinking, elbows forward. Step two, arms go a little bit forward and up, palms of the hands facing outward, and then you're opening the curtain. Now as you do this, you're already rising up slightly, and on your way up, you're turning the palms to the sky. And you're in this position. This is your end position, basically. Okay, and from here, you're just going to sink from the pelvis, focus on the pelvis, relax down, and the arms are just becoming heavy. So you're not trying to push the arms down, you're literally just focus on relaxation and allow the arms to come heavy and relax down. And then you're starting from the beginning. Okay, turn and down. Now I'm just going to show this exercise to you from the side perspective, okay? So you're here, apply the principles. You're sinking, sitting into the quad. Arms go forward, you're rising, opening, and sinking. Arms go forward, elbows forward, palms outward, turn the palms around as you're rising up. Now again, as you're rising up here, you can focus on the crown of the head and just pulling the whole body upwards, okay? Crown first, and then the pelvis comes with it. When you're opening the arms, you're not bringing them all the way down here, not even right to the sides of the body. You're stopping a little bit further to the front, somewhere here, okay? You don't want to go as far as the point where you're going to stretch the muscles. You don't actually want to stretch them deeply. That's not the point here. We just want to go as far as we can maintain relaxed because we want to take the muscles out of the equation, okay? So we want to relax the muscles that they're hanging down from the bones so that we can target the connective tissues and fascia in between the muscle fiber, okay? One more time. And down. And down. Now you've already learned so many new things, so many cues already just for that simple movement. We're not going to stop here just yet. I want to tell you a few things that you should focus on, okay? Where should your attention be? First of all, when you do this exercise, you want to make sure that you apply all those principles that we've already talked about. There are a few more which you can learn in the video that I linked up in the corner. So the weight distribution, you want to have it on the Yong Chuen point, you want to sit into the quad, you want to sink by relaxing the pelvis, pulling up the crown, keeping the chest cavity empty and relaxed, relax the Dan Tian area, Okay, all these are the principles. When you're doing this movement, you want to relax the muscles here as good as you can at all times. Now here you're having that visualization almost, you can use one, but it's not necessary, of opening the curtain or gently pressing away water to the sides. Now this is for a specific reason. When you have a visualization like this, which creates a kind of resistance, then you're opening up the whole body. So when you're here and you're moving the hands to the outside, you're not just closing the joints and relaxing, you're active, your whole body is open up. It is as if you have a circle of energy here or more like a chi ball in front of your chest that is expanding and through this expansion, you're opening the joints and the fingers and the wrist and the elbows and the shoulders. The whole chest is opening up, okay? Your chi will be able to flow freely. 
by applying this resistance, for example, using a visualization, you know, so that it makes it a little bit difficult to push to the outside, you're also opening up the whole body, opening up the joints. Okay? You want to make sure that you create space and move with chi. So you're not relaxed like dead pretty much, just hanging here, everything is wobbly, but you're open up. The whole body is expanded here. When you're just learning all those cues and it's still a bit difficult for you to apply all of them at the same time, again, just take one or two practice and just focus on those two for a while until you can take the next step. In regards to your breathing, Especially if you're just learning the movement and trying to get into that rhythm, trying to get into this flow, I recommend you to just skip the manipulation of your breath. Don't try to inhale when you're coming up, exhale when you're going down. This will happen naturally. Okay, so don't try to force your breath in a specific pattern. Just allow the body to adapt naturally. People always try to be smarter than their body and manipulate the breath to a certain extent, but then complain about tension building up in the chest area, for example. You can prevent this if you're just allowing the body to breathe here. But what you can do is you can take some time to make sure that your breath is easy okay not tense so what i mean by that is if you notice that your chest is carrying lots of tension because maybe you're engaging the muscles there or your belly is very engaged your lower abdomen you're pulling in the belly for example then just soften the area and allow the breath to go deeper ideally of course in the lower dantian but first of all Focus on relaxing the areas, the chest and the lower abdomen so that your breath can enter the body easily. There are no tense muscles that prevent the breath from going in. When you're moving, and you're opening your arms like this. Remember, I already told you, expanding here, opening the whole, ball, uh, the whole joints. When you're turning the palms up, you will feel how you're opening the side rib cage and the front rib cage a little bit more. Okay, so what you can do to feel this as well is one, relax. Relax the shoulder blades in particular in this position and you will feel how the arms become a little bit heavy in the back. And when you turn the palms up, just bring the mind in this area, the side rib cage, front rib cage. And maybe you're able to feel how those tissues are unbinding and you're creating a little bit more space. Even though if you're not fully, full on, forcing yourself in this position. But instead, just on a more subtler level. Eventually you might notice that your breath is coming in in coordination with this movement. Like I just said, exhaling when you sinking, sitting into the quad, inhaling when you're opening up and expanding. 
But again, don't worry so much about that in the very beginning. And one last thing I want to tell you is the relaxation of the shoulders, which is playing a very integral role because it's very difficult for your arms to connect to the rest of the body when your shoulders are tense and you lift your shoulders here, you will always disconnect them from your body. They're going to be moving separately. So take extra time to focus just on the shoulders, the shoulder blades to be precise. And as you're going through this movement, you can even do it slower. Just keep the mind there, keep them down, keep them relaxed. Let them become heavier. This will help you to build that whole network of fascia in the body, as well as connecting the arms to the rest of the body again. Make sure you don't collapse. Don't collapse in the lumbar region. Don't just push up from the knees and feet. Always keep a slightly stretched spine. As well as here, keep the joints and the fingers open, the palms gently spread, the joints open, and the arms and the fingers. Keep the weight evenly distributed. And then you're sure to practice in the correct manner. Eventually you will come to the point where all those little cues will become a habit. You don't have to think about it anymore. The tricky part is thinking about it will create lots of mental tension, which will ultimately manifest in the physical body as well. So we try to first focus on learning the movement so that we can then forget the cues, the instructions, because this is already yeah, it has become second nature for us. And then we can keep the mind deep inside the body and feel how we're slowly, step by step, opening it up, creating more space, releasing a lot of chronic tension and those blockages that prevent our chi from flowing freely. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. You might have noticed that you can actually apply some of those things that you have learned in this lesson to other Qigong exercises as well. For example, that cue of opening the curtain or swimming like in water, which creates some kind of resistance to that movement. And therefore it will open up and create space in the body. All the joints will open, you will expand and get rid of chronic tension and much more. So maybe this will help you to reflect on some of your other Qigong exercises and help you understand those cues and the exercises themselves on a deeper level. I want to mention one more time, if you're interested in learning more Qigong in an online academy or maybe with online courses, then I would love for you to swing by my website. Just take a look and if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to get in touch with me and I'm always happy to help. Have a good day, stay safe and healthy.